Good morning, lovely Zoe Tewitz here with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you and we are in Melbourne. I was going to say lovely sunny Melbourne but it's really not sunny at all. It's still lovely but it is cold as heck down here. I'm in the, in the sweater. I was rocking like a dress yesterday but you know how it is. We have got some fresh spooky new quests from the professor. So this first one here I'm pretty sure was to catch some ghost types. I've honestly already forgotten what it was and the reward there being dusk. I'm going to give a quick little run away from that one. But we also have here to make eight great throws and to use 108 berries to catch Pokemon. So, um, quick spoiler alert, like block your ears for 10 seconds if you don't want to hear it. This request is for Spiritum, uh, a new Gen 4 Pokemon as well. So, keen to see how this quest actually like goes out to be like one Spiritum by the looks of it forever. Which is really, really cool. But uh, if we finish that one up there, it'll be 1,008 EXP. Um, but yeah, and there's like one, part one of three. So there's plenty more to get into with this quest. As you can see here, there's plenty of Pokestops around as well. I'm not even in like the CBD area yet. That's more tomorrow. We're going to do some more exploring and getting closer to like the pack stuff. Go pick up my ticket, all that jazz. But I might go hit this little raid, chill out and see how far through this quest we can get through today. Also here with Jack, the, uh, the lizard component of Dungeons Down Under. So if you guys have been listening to that, this is Gus Gumshoes. And if you haven't been listening to that, link is in the description for Dungeons Down Under podcast. Give it a listen. It's not for kids, but give it a listen. It's really funny. Good, good jokes and we're actually waiting for Marty the uh, the pouched kangaroo component of Dungeons Down Under so he be here soon. he's soon I was gonna yeah. say there he is but it's just a random guy oh, it's <laughs> so <laughs> see you guys very soon <laughs> So we're a little bit further down in the city now as well, um, and there's a double Giratina raid about to drop off. So we run into uh, Shireen, lovely good egg from Malaysia. So um, pretty cool chance of just like meeting up. I'm uh, gonna absolutely destroy this one. So I'm gonna hit this one, then go down the road to the second one. This is my first actual chance seeing this in battle. So let's see how we go. Okay, so that went down actually pretty quick, a lot quicker than I expected, but there is a full lobby of 20. I mean, raiding in the middle of Sydney, uh, middle of Melbourne, I'm sorry. <laughs> Used to being in Sydney for the weekend. Raiding in the middle of Melbourne is pretty awesome as well. There's just like constantly people in the lobbies, which is great. Extra XP there, and now to catch it. I'm curious how far away it sits for this one, and I have no idea what is decent for CP either, so we're just going to be figuring it out as we go along. Get this one to stay in. <laughs> Come on. Yay, there we go. Magic third ball. Nothing too crazy, nothing too stressful. Locked in. And we've actually completed that part of the quest that was requiring eight great throws and some more berries in there. That one's gonna take forever. Well not really forever, but I just need to turn off my Go Plus and use a hundred berries on something. So let's appraise this. Certainly caught my attention. So it's somewhere in the 80s. Not too bad for the first raid. And okay, 2k egg as well. Why not? Let's get that out of the way. Come on, shiny Togepi. Not shiny. <laughs> One day I'll hatch that shiny Togepi. Yeah, the trams are also amazing for hatching eggs. Like, it's just the perfect speed to be hatching eggs. So, I'm gonna be incubating, try to pick up some more uh, Gen 4 eggs as well in the 10ks. But that second raid is a bit further up that way, so let's go get it. Okay, second one down. Let's quickly CP check. Maybe it'll be better than. Oh, that's significantly better than the previous one, 1915. So it'll be around 90%, I think? Better. Come on. Hey, there we go. Magic. Locked it in. How did you go for yours? Got them? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Let's check. Wonder defense. 15 defense, okay. That's okay. I'm sure over the weekend we'll find plenty more Giratina raids. I mean, just look at the. How many gyms are in the city? It's oh, and there's another one hatching in 40 minutes. <laughs> but I'm uh, heading off to the hotel. I'm going to check in now. I've been carrying this bag around all day, like since 5 a.m. So it's time to get rid of that. <laughs> so day two now here. I'm heading back into the city. I need to actually pick up my PAX panel uh, ticket, like my pass for the weekend. So I need to head like right in to the convention center to grab that. I'm uh, going to jump on the tram, do some more catches and shiny checks because I am desperate for a shiny Drifloon. It is such a cute shiny. And honestly, if I don't end up with a shiny during this event for any of them, I'm clearly not catching enough stuff because almost everything that is spooky and spawning is shiny eligible. It's crazy the amount of shiny possibilities for this event. So 
I'm gonna head into town now. Uh, might drop through Hosier Lane as well and take some nice AR pictures. That place is stunning for street art, so take some nice photos. Shiny check like crazy. And then also hopefully smash a few more Giratina raids. It was easy just to jump in any lobby and it was full. So uh, CBD living, like big city living is kind of cool for Pokemon Go, definitely. Um, Newcastle is not as densely populated as, you know, the middle of Melbourne or the middle of Sydney. So this has been a nice little like uh, new way to play for me. Definitely a new style of play. Of course, as well, really curious to try out ultra rural styles of play as well coming up. So if you guys have any recommendations for stuff like that or places I should check out in Australia for super rural play, let me know because I want to compare and contrast and see how each community plays. Let's head into town and maybe find a shiny. <laughs> timing guys there is a raid hatching in about 40 minutes here for a oh and there's a 20 minute one down there for giratina so actually in hosier lane this lane is actually filled with street art like a couple actually adjacent uh streets and lanes and alleyways in melbourne are full absolutely littered with just incredible street art changing like constantly so a couple of shiny checks here as well regular on the murkrow and then regular on Duskull as well, but I think I might go up to this little spot up here that's all lured up, do a little bit of shiny hunting, a couple of checks, and then explore a couple of other side streets around here. It's just such an awesome spot for AR photos. Um, oh, and how colourful Chatot is. Yes, let's take some AR pics of this one. up at another Giratina raid. Unfortunately, this one ran from me. Didn't like my excellent throws, but that's okay. It wasn't uh, any better with the IV, so lucky that it wasn't a crazy spicy one. Uh, just finished up as well. The top two tasks there for the second component of the Spiritomb quest, and remaining now is to finish catching the 108 Pokemon. So I've caught 47. Shouldn't be too hard to do, considering I'm in quite a densely populated area. Probably just jump back on the tram and head back towards home and clean up those last 50-something catches and Done and dusted, happy days. So I keep shiny checking all the way through Melbourne on the way back home. If I find anything, I'll stop to let you know, but otherwise let's talk when we get back home. Okie dokie, so back at the Airbnb now. Gonna settle in and do a little bit of editing because I'm a little bit behind. I haven't put any spooky vids out for you guys, but I did do a live stream, a little shiny hunt. So if you wanna check that one out, it will be up here for you guys to watch back. Did a couple of Giratina raids as well in there. So the ones from today that kind of weren't included in this video, they're in that stream, but we've got two potential shiny Sableyes here in quests, regular. I'm gonna catch these ones as well because we do need to uh, catch that 108 Pokemon. So not too hard, I'm getting pretty close to finishing that one up. So first one caught Sableye, it's such a tricky little devil, it never wants to stay in the ball. And let's go, second one, shiny check, regular. That's going to be a tricky one to find as well. It's not the, it's not a super common spawn during this event, it seems. And also are uh, the quests as well. I've only seen three of the quests today for Sableye. Uh, I've completed quite a few quests for just random stuff, cleared some other things out that are just berry rewards. But um, caught, added, beautiful. So, I mean, all in all, a pretty, like, fine day nothing too crazy no shinies the trams as i was saying before are just crazy here in melbourne it's so so easy to just absolutely clean up and catch stuff and what no 
No way. Are you serious? When was that? That's that's on the Go Plus. What the heck? That was no, I hatched, okay, I hatched this Torchic and this Buneary right here and then I put on my Go Plus and went into Woolworths to buy stuff. <laughs> what the heck? Are you serious? I catch a shiny Drifloom when I'm in bloody Coles buying pads. Are you mm? That's ridiculous. Holy dooly. Okay, that's like way under odds as well. I think I've only seen maybe a hundred if I have. Let's give that one a quick star. Holy dooly. <laughs> okay, so the... Change the title. Shiny, what did she catch? That's insanity. That's so, so good. Oh my goodness. Um, what? Okay, what am I sitting on for encounters for that? Because that's way sooner than expected. Sinnoh. Scene 71. So that's way under odds. I mean, odds for shinies, guys, in Pokemon Go generally are 1 in 470. So that is incredibly lucky. That is like, to compare to other stuff that I don't have shinies for. Let's have a look. Duskull, I've seen 400, never had a shiny. Shuppet, uh, seen 360, I've got one shiny. Uh, what else is spawning? Houndor, seen almost 500, no shiny. So to see one at under 100 is pretty lucky. My shiny luck has been... I'm, I'm too scared now to type in shiny in case I plus something else. Okay, the previous stuff is Beldum Community Day. My shiny luck has been insanity, guys. Seriously. The snubble on the Saturday in Sydney was crazy. Then the Growlithe the next morning as the second Pokemon I touched. And then there's a Magikarp, as I said, in the, in the requests, like in the field research, sitting in there. And now a Drifloon. The newest shiny. This week's been so amazing, oh my goodness. Holy moly. I'm seriously, okay. I'm actually working on a video at the moment talking about shiny rates uh, in Pokemon Go. I did ask on Twitter as well, so you guys can check out the poll. It has ended, but if you want to have a look at how other people voted on this poll uh, as to whether or not you think the shiny rates in Pokemon Go are too high, too low, just about right. But um, I really want to give you guys a history and a background on shinies, give you like some context comparing it to previous games and how, you know, obviously Pokemon Go differs from previous games, but kind of uh, why shinies are what they are and why they are the rate that they are in Pokemon Go. So this is another cool little data point to be, I'm going to be using for that video. And it's one of the prettiest shinies. I love him. Let me know in the comments down below guys, how have you been going for your shiny hunts? I'm sending you guys so many shiny vibes, putting the shiny love out into the universe so that I hope you get some shinies too during this spooky event. Remember, if you're not catching, you can't find them. Go out there and catch, catch, catch. Tap on every single thing that can be a potential shiny. If you're putting in the hard work, I mean, I've been out hunting for six hours. So to get one shiny out of six hours, that's, that's a pretty good little investment. Um, plus all of yesterday as well, I had no shinies and that was a full day out in Melbourne. So put in the legwork and you will be rewarded. Sometimes it does take a lot longer to find shinies. For example, my Magikarp, I didn't see after uh, 2,000, over 2,000 encounters, at least 1,600 of those were after, uh, or 1,500 of those were after the shiny was dropped. So 1,500 encounters to get a shiny. So keep at it. If you are hunting something, just keep at it. You will get it eventually. Super, super hyped. Tomorrow is the PAX panel. I'm so keen to show that to you guys as well. So much fun stuff happening this weekend. It's going to be a big one. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to be trying to put out the videos as consistently as I can. But the next few days are packed at PAX. So have a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.